from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, October 11th. Okay, so we have the moon here in this Capricorn energy. We will see it go void, of course, at 11.53 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Aquarius energy at 12.32 p.m. So not a huge amount of time that the moon is void, which of course works in our favor because when the moon is void, we find ourselves losing our minds. Things get shaky, things get uncertain, things get unstable, especially emotionally speaking, because that's what the moon rules over. But this is the third day in a row that we have major, major energy shifts taking place. Again, I'm going to take you back October 9th, we had Jupiter go retrograde. Here yesterday on the 10th, we had the first quarter moon pop off in Capricorn energy. And today we have Pluto going direct at 29 degrees in Capricorn. A very interesting dynamic that I'm going to set the stage for you here in just a sec. Very interesting dynamic that we had all of these events take off. We had all of these solar flares pop off since the eclipse technically, but this week definitely in alignment with these energy shifts. And I think it's super interesting because when the moon gets to the final degrees of this Capricorn energy and obviously conjuncts teams up with resets, renews with Pluto, that is when the moon goes void. We lock into the Aquarius energy. We have a little bit of an interesting dynamic between Mercury and Uranus, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then Pluto goes direct. Why do I think that's amazing? Well, because the moon in Aquarius is taking over and then the moon is, you know, showing us where the blockages are, the restrictions are that should have been illuminated to us in the Capricorn energy. The Aquarius energy allows us to emotionally detach, to act as the observer so that we're not so close to the situation of the circumstances that we can't see the forest past the trees, essentially. And then what happens? Pluto goes direct at this 29 critical crisis karmic degree under the influence of the moon in Aquarius. And of course, Pluto will be moving into this Aquarius energy November 19th and will be staying there until 2044. I see a huge significance in that. Hopefully you do as well. So with Pluto going direct here today, there is an astral forecast for this particular event. If you haven't downloaded your October energy guide for your zodiac sign to know where this particular energy is manifesting and impacting, influencing your life the most, you're definitely going to want to do that. We have a very powerful time ahead of us from now until November 19th. This is the last hurrah, the final hurrah, if you will, with this Plutonian Capricorn energy. This is the death and destruction of the old world, of the old structures, of society, of the power struggles within our own lives. It's a very important transit. So we're going to be balls to the walls from now until November, trying to clean up the debris of the old world in order for us to clear the space, clean the slate for us to move into this Aquarius energy where we become a little bit more innovative, a little bit more progressive to problem solve a lot of the issues that of course we've been facing in this Capricorn energy. This is societal, but it's also individual. And that's why you need to know where this energy is taking place in your chart. So with all of that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon still in this Capricorn energy, anchoring us into the present moment, giving us a good opportunity to add logic and practicality to our plans, to our strategies on what we have to close the door upon and what we have to kind of pursue now, as far as building new systems, new structures in order to house the new goals, visions and dreams in which we're trying to manifest. The moon in Capricorn is going to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. So this means that, and again, the North Node trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. At this particular juncture, we're thinking about the future and we're thinking about where the, we have the opportunities to build new, to start fresh, to initiate a new path, new plan, new strategy that, of course, is going to have us kind of upgrading from the physical realm, from the physical circumstances that, again, the old version of self had built and created that this new version of self no longer in alignment with. 
the moon and Capricorn going to get into the boxing ring, square off, fight it out with Mercury. Mercury being the ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. He's in Libra energy again, trying to find that sweet spot, trying to find compromise, balance, peace, harmony in our thoughts, in our ability to communicate our thoughts outwardly, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Again, major pop-offs under that particular eclipse event that has definitely highlighted the soul contract that are coming to an end, the ones that are beginning and the ones that essentially will not be renewed. The moon being our heart space, Mercury being our head space, they're not on the same page. And of course, Capricorn energy and Libra energy rarely ever is. They are the furthest elements away. And because the Capricorn energy is very rooted into what we know here in the present moment, what we have power and control over the indecisiveness of the Libra energy that Mercury is currently in, has us kind of back and forth, has us very uncertain where our mind, our plans, our thoughts, our ideas are concerned. But emotionally speaking, we're actually very grounded, very anchored into what it is that we know that we have to do. We're just trying to talk ourselves either into something or out of something that emotionally speaking, the Capricorn energy, just not willing to budge on. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. A trine means that we are working with like elements. This is earth on earth action. And a trine means that we are growing in the right direction. There's a new realization coming online because Uranus is involved. There's going to be an aha moment, an epiphany, if you will, that once we know, we can't unknow. And it is likely going to have to do with where it is that we've been desperately holding on to the old even though we've been praying for change. Uranus retrograde in that Taurus energy is trying to show us where it is that we have the death grip on the old and where it is that we've been praying for anything but the old, but yet we haven't been able to let go of the old in order to create the space for new things to actually be born, birthed, and created. Emotionally speaking, we are gaining some insight. We're gaining some clarity. We're also kind of revving ourselves up, kind of realizing where it is that we have to stop resisting the change and where it is that we have to get out of our own damn way. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who is now retrograde in this Gemini energy. Again, if you haven't listened to the Astro Forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. Bust out your October energy guide, capture what is going on for you and where Jupiter's retrograde energy is actually going to impact your life the most. Now, Jupiter, when he is involved in a positive way, there is a lot of optimism, a lot of confidence. We're being restored and renewed in our hopes, our wishes, our dreams. We're trying to have a positive outlook, which of course feels very, I'm going to say semi uncomfortable to kind of do seeing as the Capricorn energy usually has us in a negative Nancy mind frame. However, we're going to take it, we're going to run with it. Now, Jupiter is illuminating where it is that, again, we've learned the hard way in certain aspects, but we have to integrate that information so that we don't repeat past patterns, past mistakes. At this particular juncture, we are feeling a little bit, I'm going to say, like we're able to achieve the new dreams, the new visions, the new goals that, again, we're kind of conjuring up in our inner realm. There's a lot of wisdom coming through, again, reflecting back on some tough love life lessons that we've already learned the hard way and having the opportunity to anchor that information, that knowledge, that wisdom into the present moment to avoid, again, repeating past situations, circumstances, patterns and behaviors. The moon is then going to sextile Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his rulership in Pisces energy. We love this because what we're able to kind of visualize, what we're able to imagine, what we're able to dream of, the moon in Capricorn is able to apply logic and practicality to it to see how it is that we could actually bring some of these visions into fruition, into the materialistic realm. This again is kind of renewing our hope, our faith, our wishes, our dreams, but even even more than that, it's getting us in touch with our intuition. There is a gut reaction pulling us towards something, pulling us away from something. And sometimes the logic, the practicality, the rationality is a good thing to base our decisions off of. But sometimes when we have this gnawing feeling coming from our higher self, from our intuition, that actually holds more weight. 
The moon is then going to semi-square, creating tension and conflict with Saturn, its ruler. So of course, this is where we kind of gain a little bit of an intuitive insight, where we're excited about the vision, the dream that we're conjuring up inside of us. But just when we feel good about it, our intellect kicks in. We start talking fear into the magic that we just experienced in our inner realm. So Saturn, of course, brings a little bit of a harsh reality check, shows us where it is that guess what? If you don't have the willpower and discipline to change your beliefs, to address where it is that you're blocking yourself, then you're never going to align yourself with the path, the vision, the goal, the dream that you just imagined for yourself. And so this is us kind of dipping into that negative Nancy narrative where it is that again, we're breaking things down in a way to say that unless we change the way that we feel about what we feel worthy and deserving of, we can have all of the, let's call it vision that we want, the imagination that we want, we will not be able to bring it to life if we do not believe that we are capable of doing just that. So again, Saturn being retrograde and this Pisces energy is about kind of breaking down our delusions and confusion where it is that we have have hopes, wishes and dreams, but we don't ever have the willpower and discipline to do something about it. The moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Pluto, the final degrees of this 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. Pluto is still retrograde while this happens. This is the last aspect that will take place before the moon goes void, of course, and shifts into Aquarius energy. And so a conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. It is going to highlight, let's call it the struggles, the restrictions, the limitations that we're currently facing in relation to us closing the door on the past, us initiating a new path moving forward, us identifying the new wants, needs and desires and equally identifying the limitations, who and what is holding us back from actually getting there. Now, the good part to this is that this is an empowerment energy. So we are going to reach a new level of authority within ourselves. We're going to be able to see the power and control that we actually have over certain situations and circumstances. Again, 11.53 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon is going void, of course. We lock into the Aquarius energy at 12.32 p.m. When the moon shifts into Aquarius energy, things are lighter. Things are brighter. We're moving out of being anchored into our physical bodies, being very connected to the physical form. And we're now moving up into the higher realms of observation. We get to emotionally detach from our situations and circumstances to again observe to see where it is that we're blocking ourselves and our progress and where it is that we could do better, where it is that we have options and opportunities to think outside of the box to come up with some solutions that we would have never even dreamed up while still in that Capricorn energy. So at 1.11 p.m., Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this indecisive, flip-flopping, teeter-tottering, back-and-forth energy of Libra, we have Mercury making a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in the Taurus energy. So a couple of things here. First of all, Uranus rules over the higher octave of our intelligence, connecting us to the higher realms of intelligence, while Mercury rules over the lower level of intelligence that depends on the information, the details of our current environment. Second thing I want to point out, Libra energy, Taurus energy. What do they have in common? They're both ruled over by Venus. Where is Venus? Oh, yeah, that's right. Venus is doing the shadow work in Scorpio energy, major pivot point, major change taking place in our heart space, in our worth, in our values, in our wants, in our needs, in our desires, illuminating what it is that we actually want for ourselves and equally illuminating the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that may prevent us in actually going after what it is that we want. So here we have the higher level of our intellect and the lower of our level of our intellect clashing. What does this mean? First of all, it's going to be super, super challenging to be understood. Okay, this could have major implications on communication as Mercury rules over that as well. But even within us, within ourselves, it may be that we're having a hard time understanding what actually needs to be done. Maybe we're having a hard time understanding our own damn selves. Even more than that, if this is involving other people, we're, we don't stand a chance in having other people understand where we're coming from. 
We will not be understood in the way that we were hoping for, which is going to lead to isolation, to a disconnect. We have to watch out for considering some very poor and bad decisions. Again, there are no decisions that should be made while Mercury is still in Libra energy. If you do make a decision, if you do make a commitment, if you do choose from your crossroads choice point, you will likely backtrack and come back and kind of, you know, second guess yourself once Mercury actually moves into Scorpio energy here next week. There is going to be this urgency to want to be seen, to want to be heard. There's going to be this, I'm going to call it a uh, very strong impulse to put yourself out there in a way that you should probably hesitate and not do. The disorganization within our own inner realm and the disorganization in our ability to communicate effectively, it is very Mercury retrograde-ish and everybody should just bite their tongue until this particular energy comes to pass. This is not a good situation to talk about serious matters, not a good situation to choose or decide on anything. And not such a good situation to want to declare certain stances, if you will, because again, misunderstandings reign supreme. So at 4.32 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, Pluto is going to station direct. Again, please listen to the Astro Forecast. Please do the work in your energy guide to understand where the next couple of weeks from now until November 19th, we have green light move on, move forward, get the demolition ball out. Let's clean up the remnants of the past. Let's clear this space. You have power, control, and authority over a lot more aspects of your life now than you have compared to the last five months. The moon, now in Aquarius energy, is going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy. So Aquarius energy is a fixed sign. Scorpio energy is a fixed sign. What they help us do is to stabilize. We're stabilizing in our heart space. We're stabilizing in our head space. And what we're doing is we're realizing, because we're acting as the observer in this Aquarius energy, we're the change of heart is actually taking place, where there are new passions and desires kind of rising to the surface of our awareness, putting us in a situation and have to close the door on particular people, places and things that the old version of self felt connected to that this new version of self with these new wants, needs and desires need to get rid of in order to clear the way to pursue a new path of happiness, of stability, of passion, of desire. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Aquarius making a very awkward interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who is retrograde in Gemini energy. This is air on air action, but there's a disconnect between the air energies, meaning the moon in Aquarius is trying to kind of problem solve on where it is that we have to clean up some of the issues from the past in order to clear the space for us to pursue new paths, new adventures, new quests. Jupiter, on the other hand, who is now retrograde, looking back, reflecting, revising, revisiting old ideas, old goals, old ambitions, of course, has us kind of focused on where it is that we need to challenge ourselves, where it is that we need to challenge those old ideas, challenge those thoughts, revisit some of the concepts that we've been very guarded about, kind of revisit some of the information and knowledge that we would have gained in previous Tough Love Life lessons that, again, the moon and Aquarius can take to heart and really integrate in this present moment to do better, to be better. The Aquarius energy is all about progress and innovation, thinking outside of the box. And of course, we need to reflect upon the box that we've been living in in order to actually feel comfortable enough to step out of the box and see what awaits us out there. So we may not be in a position to kind of grow externally, but we're sure as hell in a position to grow internally. This is what this whole Jupiter transit is going to be. And the intellectual pursuits that we are going to try and, you know, really pursue while Jupiter is retrograde is coming full stop in solution mode with the moon in Aquarius.